What's up, Shouty? Is that that fucking pig from the Geico commercial? Dude, those are those are those are fucking sweet. But uh, quick shout outs before we even get this shit show started. We Samantha Briggs and Rich Samantha Briggs and Rich Froning are your fittest man and woman on the planet. And there are some bad motherfuckers. They are. They, if you don't know who they are, look look them up. Another shout out we want to give to a AJ Chikizi because he understands where <laughs> he understands the origin of a lot of MMA fans. We'll just keep it at that. Okay. He's, he's he's possibly written one of the greatest comments in YouTube history, in my opinion. If you guys want to check out his comment, just go over to our latest, one of our latest MMA videos. It's MMA fans versus real sports fans. Now, with that being fucking said, let's talk about UFC 163. Oh boy, I'm fucking excited for this one. Stop fucking lying. <laughs> um, excited. Uh, I just, you know, before we get onto this shit, George, you know, it's funny because it's like the worst cards are the ones we're fucking paying for. Yeah, but you know what? This one's loaded with a lot of Brazilians because it's in Brazil, and I, yeah, I sort of understand what Dane is doing. But if he's loading up the free cards to entice people to buy his cards, I, I just hope these guys show up and put on more of a show. I'm not saying the free card we just had wasn't good, right? But I just would have liked to see more finishes. And you know what's funny? Besides I, Raleigh Lawler whoop, whooping up somebody's head. Robbie Lawler was bringing it. I will say this. Yeah. The the um latest. And yes, I understand Mighty Mouse finished too. Calm down. Yes, everybody's getting all funny about that. This is a uh, this is something I will I will say. Um, it has been funny because the last cards that were letdown cards were the ones that were stacked, and the ones that were did not have you know as much mainstream talent were the ones that ended up being really good fucking cards. For example, this upcoming card, so, 163. Per per that theory, this should be an excellent fucking it card. It should be an excellent card. Now let's get with, on with some excellent fighters that George and I know fucking absolutely nothing about. We're not going to front because they're from Brazil. <laughs> so it's, George is laughing at me. Because I, I, I said, I'm going to do this video and I'm not even going to fucking front. And for all our Brazilian fr fans, please bear with us. But, uh, now, this guy, I thought his name was John Lineker because I thought he was American, but he's Brazilian. And so I'm going to have to say that maybe his name is John Lineker or whatever. But anyway. Sure. Yeah. He's fighting Jose Marie Johnson Williams Tome the Fifth. That's right. Now, I will tell you guys a little bit about these guys, okay? Johnny boys. Well, they're fighting at 125, so I have a feeling these guys are going to be flying around the ring. There. And uh, your boy, Ho Jose, Jose or Jose Marie Tome, mm -hmm. is... Uh, Pretty nasty. He, the dude has not lost the fight since 08. Yeah. He had a no contest back in 09, but he is, I mean, and he looks like he can finish it on the feet or on the ground. He's pretty, he is, I was ready to say evenly distributed, but someone would have definitely been up in my nutsack about that. He is very, a very well rounded fighter, George. You are right about that. He is 33 and 3. He, uh, and is probably a decent name in Brazil. Um, Obviously, he has not. Fifteen knockouts, thirteen submissions, three decisions, two others. He's only lo he's lost all three of his losses have come by submission, though. So that's right. A little worrisome. Now the guy he's going to be fighting opposite of is Jose Lineker. He is his strengths are cardio and aggression. He's a very aggressive fighter. He's also a very well-rounded fighter. So this is something you can see these guys really mixing it up early, and it could go either way. This guy's twenty-one and six, um, and you know, as you see in all these flyweight bouts, it's just nonstop. I mean, I don't even know why you even say right. the guy's aggressive because all these flyweights are aggressive and have cardio for days. I don't think I've ever seen a flyweight that doesn't have cardio. Have you? Have any? And I can tell you what, just looking at the the distribution of uh, distribution. John Lineker or whatever, however you want to say, Hands of Stone, that's the Bama's nickname. Distribution. And I'm going to go with Lineker cause, or Lineker. Cause I don't give a fuck. Anyway, I think that cat's going to lose. The only reason I say that is he's got nine wins by TKO, three by submission, eight by decision. Mm -hmm. I think Jose's going to jump on this cat and end it. Right. Yeah. I, so you're going to go with Jose? Joe, but see, here's the thing that kills me. You got Jose Aldo, who we call Jose. So this dude could either be called Jose or whatever. Mm -hmm. This motherfucker, Jose Marie Tome, that's who I'm going with. Okay, Jose. Jose, oh, Jose. Well, I'm going to, uh, you know what? I'm going to piggyback on your shit. I'm going to actually go with him, too, because I think with that record, he's actually done some fucking damage in the octagon. So I think he's going to continue his winning ways. Now, let's move on. In this next fight. Mm-hmm. To a middleweight In belt. this next fight, it actually gives us two two guys we know. Right. Now, you go ahead and say the one that everybody's familiar with. Go ahead. Dale's Ledes versus Tom Watson. Tom Watson. And he, if all you guys know, he has been great on the PGA Tour, and he is, you know, he's still playing Jesus. golf. Anyway. Um, no, but all our buddies across the pond, 
you guys are very familiar with Tom Watson. He is a he is a fighter from England. The guy is he's nasty, and uh, he's sixteen and five, and his nickname is Kong. Kong. No. Did you hear that? Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't think I could vote against him. But <laughs> you know, Thales Ladies is a crafty veteran. He's thirty two. But I'm gonna say this, and I know this is gonna sound strange. He's an old thirty two. And what I mean by that is he's fought twenty four times. Right. And he packed a lot of these fights in between O three and ten. I mean, he's been fighting for seven years, but if you look at the early end of his career, yeah. when he was just getting started, this band was fighting almost every other month. He, now I but now if you look at these if you look at these last three fights, they're over a year apart from each other. Right. So it looks like maybe he's starting to listen to his body a little more, and he's up on the training and try to come in healthy. Mm -hmm. So it's been over a year since his last fight, and with because of that, I'm going with Tom Watson. Yeah, I, you know, uh, it's it's funny because you know you look at these guys and he's uh, a lot of the guys from obviously Brazil are great at BJJ. Um, you know, he happens not Tom Watson, but uh, Talos has happens to be one of those guys. He probably preserved his career a lot, George, being a, a BJJ guy, because you don't see these, these strikers, I think, have more, they have more short-lived careers, you know, just because you're banging right, all the time. they get those lights turned out. Right, they get those lights turned out, and he's grappling, he's on the ground, so I think, you know, maybe he, he's an old 32, but then again, he might not be as old as we're thinking he is, you know what I mean? And, yeah, and I tell you what, Tom Watson, he's 31, so he's no spring chicken either. I mean, both these guys are in my age demographic. And you know what, looking at this and seeing that Thales is going to be fighting, he's Brazilian. And he's he? fighting in his hometown, too. That's another thing you got to remember. Yeah, so you know what? I'm going with the hometown kid in this one. I think he's going to beat Tom Watson. I, I guess I just changed my mind, but I'm entitled to do that, that, so eat ass. So you saw what I was getting. I was trying to kind of coax you into changing your mind, and I probably will coax yeah, you. Good job. I will yeah. probably coax you into making the wrong decision, because, you know, I have not been good as of late. But uh, Tom Watson just bangs i mean he if he gets taken to the ground and gets taken to the ground in brazil with this guy in front of his hometown i'm gonna I'm, that's gonna be a hard thing to overcome in my opinion and I, i'm gonna because of that i'm gonna go with uh the same thing i haven't said his name yet and i'm not gonna say it because i'll say it wrong and everybody tails lettuce. yes tails lettuce tails lettuce now now uh with this next fight uh can we just pick a guy and like not even try to discuss who these people are? I'm going to tell you this, okay? I'm going to, I'm going to go into, uh, Cesar Fer Ferreira. <laughs> Cesar <laughs> Ferreira versus Tiago Santos, uh -huh. okay? Now, um. He's got a fight in the UFC. The other guy doesn't. Yes. Um, and this is the thing, man. I mean, we don't know a lot of these fighters because like we said before, they're Brazilian fighters and we just, we are not living in Brazil. So. Our Brazilian fans, please bear with us. These guys are both middleweights. Um, I, I will say this. Uh, they are both, even even though they haven't fought, in the, one has only fought one time in the UFC, neither one of them have had a lot of MMA professional fights. I mean, one is 6-2, and two, no. and the other one is 8-1. and one. So, I mean, really, you could just throw this shit up in the air and say this is a complete fucking toss-up. They are both very... They're both very well-rounded fighters. They both can strike. They both can take, do take, they're good at takedowns. They both can grapple. So it is really a toss up, man. I, I hope they put on a show and they both get another fight in the UFC. Why don't you take one and I take the fucking other one? I'm going to take Tiago Santos. All right, I'll take, God bless it. That's what I was going to take. <laughs> Cause his name's easier to say. That's why I'm saying. It's fine. I'll take C. Saturn. That's right. You take him. Now. And now, now we go into the co-main event, which are names that we both know mm -hmm. and we've both seen them fight. It's Loyota the Dragon Machida versus Phil Davis. Mr. Wonderful. Um, I, I have a feeling if one of these guys wins mm -hmm. in a entertaining fashion, uh -huh. it could line them up for a shot at the 205 belt. Yeah, it could. And, uh, you know, I mean... I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Loyota Machida. I just like, he's an exciting fighter. I like how he's really unorthodox and he's very elusive and he's just slippery and shit. And, uh, and on, on the other, on the other side, Phil Davis is a great fighter too, but he is a, I, I hate to say this because you always have somebody to climb up yet, but he's a boring fighter. You know, I, I just well because he's a wrestler. He's a, he's a wrestler who doesn't do ground and pound. Right. He's, not, he's not a wrestler who who looks to finish it once he takes you down. Right. He's just taking you down to get points. My problem is, is I don't think he's going to be able to get close enough to Machida to take him down. Machida is a very aggressive striker, but he's also very elusive and very quick. I have a feeling you're going to see Machida strike and back up, yeah. strike and back up. Yep. And if Phil Davis is, if Phil Davis can't set up his shot, mm -hmm. eh, he's got no shot at winning this fight. No. And if he is setting up this shot, he's got to watch it, man, because Machida's got some nasty hands. He's quick. 
you know, and uh, uh, and feet. And, that Bama is going to. Phil Davis is going to get, and the same is going to go in the in the final for this in the main event fight that we're going to get to next. Right. I just don't think Phil. It's hard to simulate in training. Yeah, Loyola Machida style. It is. I, I just don't. Who do you bring in besides Loyola Machida? There's no one who fights like him. He's got a karate background. Right. He throws lots of kicks. He's light on his toes. He move. He's got great footwork, and he moves around the ring very well. And, you, and I, I just and, don't think Phil Davis will be able to catch no, him. No, I, I agree with you. I don't think. I think that's going to be a real fucking hard task. One-sided affair. It's going to be a hard task, and I'm going to tell you what. If Leota Machida drinks that piss before the fight, it's a wrap for Phil Davis. I'm going to just let everybody know that right now. If he gurgles that, well, he gurgles that piss. Considering he does it every morning. Well, I'm going to tell you what. If he takes an extra fucking dosage of that shit, Mr. Wonderful will be now, Mr. Here's Wonderful. the other thing that I heard, what? because me being in the, the CrossFit world these days, yes. and anyone who's been in the CrossFit world or done an immense amount of pull-ups or anything where you had to use your hands a lot, right. You tear sh your skin off your hands all day long. Right. So I was reading an article and they said pee on your hands. Yeah. To toughen the skin. That, that, I know. I know. You, piss. You, I know. Piss helps athletes, but. I mean, piss. Really? The, piss helps. Help, you know, pee helps a lot of shit. Every, every. You know, I'm just let you guys know. Pee helps a lot of shit. Machita might be onto something. I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you I what. I guess, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how, how, when do you, when would you piss on your hands? Like in the morning shower? Well, when you're taking a piss, you just have like, your. Do you need to piss on your hands and let it soak in? Well, I mean, somebody probably stumbled upon that shit. They probably had some nasty calluses and they were taking a piss and got a little bit of piss on their hand. And like, oh shit, my calluses healed. Damn, son, I'm pissing on my hands every day now. You know? Yeah, I guess, but it's. I, are right. you now? All right, on to the main I'm, event. I'm going to tell you guys right now. George got off that subject because you, you. I'm going to tell you what. If you had a fucking camera in his fucking bathroom, he's pissing on his hands tomorrow. You can believe that shit. I'm going to tell you right bitching now. About these after calluses. this, tomorrow morning when I'm getting in the shower to take my morning you're, piss you're, after I work you're out, piss on more you. than likely I'm going to piss on you're my gonna hands. You're going to piss on. <laughs> First off, you're. It's my urine. Yeah. They're my hands, and it's sterile. I'm not asking my wife to piss on my hands. I'm not asking you to piss on and, my hands. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, there's not a man alive who hasn't dribbled some piss on their own that, hands. That's anymore. right. And and for all you guys, I'm going to take it a step further. Not only is it George's piss, but we all know that George is fucking not so Dougie Fresh. I don't know from experience, but he said it several <laughs> fucking times that he is fucking Dougie Fresh. Now, let's move on to the main event. And that is going to be... got to keep him Dougie, son. You got to. Now, this is Jose Aldo versus the Korean zombie, Chan Sung Jung. Okay, um... I'm going to tell you what. This was supposed to be Anthony Pettis, but Pettis got hurt due to a knee injury. Yes, and I, I, this this is the thing, man. I I I like I like the Korean Zombie. I think he's a great fighter. I mean, I, I you know, but I think he's just going to be completely outclassed going against Jose Aldo. And let me say this really quick. If you look at the Korean Zombie's resume, the one thing that jumps out to me and has led him to all this hype is when he knocked out Mark Hominick. And I think that was not, I you mean, obviously he capitalized on something, but I think it was just a bad game plan. Mark Hominick got a little too excited and fucking got a little too aggressive and it backfired on him. And fucking the Korean zombie took, took advantage of it. Now you can't say anything negative about the Korean zombie for that. You can say more or less Mark Hominick fucked up. But when you're going up against somebody like Jose Aldo, you, I, I just, that was, I'd say an eight. That's the seven or eight. I mean, it was, you've done better burps. At least I pulled the microphone away. They won't have to hear Oh, it. really? Okay. But, uh, but, I mean, what are you, what's, what's your opinion on this shit? I just. Um, the Korean zombie has all the heart in the world. Yeah. He's constantly going to come forward. Mm -hmm. Again, you can't simulate Jose Aldo in training. Right. I don't know who the Korean zombie's training with mm -hmm. to help him get ready for this fight, but I, I just. Yeah. He, he's going to keep coming forward, and I have a feeling Jose Aldo is going to finish this. I know he gets, you know, criticized for his fighting style, but right. he he's going to have to finish this fight because I don't think the Korean Zombie is going to give him a choice. I'm gonna, I, I, but I just, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I, I don't think the guy's got enough tools in his bag to pull this one out. Being the Korean Zombie, I, my money is strictly with Jose Aldo. Uh, I, I just don't. I, no, I could be wrong yeah. because it's, so far it's it's been the last couple of months of upsets, but I just. Yeah, I, 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 this is another thing too. I think for Jose Aldo to finish the Korean zombie, it's going to be hard to get in and hit him and finish him with your hands, in my opinion, because he's got a fucking rock. Not only does he have heart, but he's got a great fucking jaw. We've seen him get rocked right. time and time again. Aldo's going to have to do like, like what he did to Faber and fucking just light those legs up. And if he can light those legs up, then 
and slow him down. Slow him down, then maybe he could just beat him on points. I, I would, I, I think it's actually a hard fight for Aldo to finish via TKO or KO. I just think you'll, you won't hey, see that. I, it might be a hard fight for him to finish, but I don't think it's going to be a hard fight for him to win. No, not and at what all. I mean by that is, I don't. I don't think the Korean Zombie is going to be able to score enough offensive points. Now he'll definitely get the aggression side of the card. I think because we've seen him fight before, and he's going to be right. You know, he's got one speed. Right. It, but I just think this is going to be. Uh, this isn't going to help him in this fight. Right. He would need to be a more slow and patient fighter with Jose and make Jose push. Jose. And to me, if I'm fighting Jose Aldo, Jose I want him to fire cats. first, and I'm going to try to counter him. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, and I, that's not the Korean Zombie style. Now. I hope. I think it's going to be a, a great main event fight. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be entertaining as hell to watch because mm-hmm. that dude's going to go home in a body bag. Yeah, it's, he's going to be just. He, he is. He's going to be fucked. I'm going to tell you what. I think at the end of the night, the Korean zombie is going to be battered and bruised the fuck up. He's going to be a sore bastard because his legs are going to get lit up. I mean, Jose Aldo is really quick too. You know, he's quick. Yeah, and I agree with you because I'm going to tell you what we've watched Jose, and when he when he decides to attack your legs, that it's hits just... with a tremendous thud. It, I mean, it, and that's the one way to slow the Korean zombie down. Yeah. You you want to slow him down and keep him from coming at you? Keep blow his kneecap yeah, out. Yeah, he won't be aggressive when those legs swell the fuck up, you know? Right, and he won't be able to move forward. So then he's a sitting target. Yep. And I, so it'll be... I, I, I don't envy his position. No, I think the only way that he beats... I don't think he'll outpoint Jose Aldo. I think the only way he can beat him... Jose Aldo has a lot if of ways to beat him. him. He's got to knock fucking Aldo out. He's got to he's got to he, catch he's, him. He's got to he's got to get that uh, Chris Weidman. Yes, or or fucking what do do what he did to uh, Mark Hominick. Anyway, we're getting the fuck out of Dodge, and because uh, this video is coming up late as shit, bitches. Yes, it is getting coming up late as shit. Comments below, trolls, feel free to go away because you know what you can get on these nuts, deuces. Yeah, definitely get on Kevin's because y'all like them salty nuts. These, these is Dougie. Why you got to talk about my nuts like that, son? I'm just trying to figure out how many of them people know who Dougie Fresh is. Because that's an old motherfucker. Mm -hmm. That's Kevin's shit. Yeah. Anyway. Later. Adios, Nuggets. Yes. Have you ever seen